Welcome to uh, Heart of Darkness Lecture 2. This is um, what I think is the most important parts of uh, Section 2, Into the Heart of Darkness, uh, by Joseph Conrad. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is um, the a couple pages in uh, to Section 2, Marlowe starts spending a lot of time talking about restraint, inner restraint. And um, he talks about on his ship he has cannibals as members of his crew and the fact that you know they're showing such inner restraint. They have very little food and they're hungry and you know the the regular um, people on the crew that are not cannibals are you know eating regular things but uh, Marlo is just so amazed at the inner restraint that these cannibals are showing and he it comes up several times in this section inner restraint inner restraint um, so on page 38 of the Dover edition I think that uh, Marlo sums up this whole restraint um, theme that's been going on fairly well um, the passage starts sad but true sad but true and these chaps too had no earthly reason for any kind of scruple restraint I would just as soon have expected restraint from a hyena prowling among the corpses of a battlefield but there was the fact facing me the fact dazzling to be seen like the foam on the depths of the sea like a ripple on an unfathomable enigma a mystery greater when I thought of it than the curious inexplicable note of desperate grief in this savage clamor that had swept by us on the river bank behind the blind whiteness of the fog. Um, I, I want you to remember this inner restraint piece and uh, remember it for when uh, Marlow meets Kurtz. I think it will be very important and very pertinent to our discussions. Uh, inner restraint is, you know, uh, a, a great thing to um, compare and contrast to Kurtz. The next part I want to highlight um, is on page 40 and 41 of the Dover Thrift Edition, and this is the attack. Um, so Marlow and his crew are going down the river, and then all of a sudden they start getting shot by arrows, and they get attacked by the natives. And um, I really think that this section is, is so important. I mean, it's some of the best action in the book. There's not a ton of action that happens in Heart of Darkness. This is it. And um, I think it's just so interesting, all the things that the crew members and Marlowe do um, or don't do. And, you know, people are dying and they're shooting their guns off. And it's just they're bumbling around and they're getting caught on things. And arrows are, are coming at them and they're tripping over each other they're very unable to deal with this attack and I think that that really says something about um, the European presence presence in Africa they can't um, hold it off at all so uh, then um, on page 42 of the Dover thrift edition um, Marlowe's helmsman who is an African gets shot and he's dying and I feel that what he does with his last moments on this earth is very important. The paragraph starts on page 42, we two whites stood over him. And there's that white and black um, colors that are going on uh, again in this book. So um, he says, only in the very last moment, as though in response to some sign we could not see, to some whisper we could not hear, he frowned heavily. And that frown gave to his black death mask an inconceivable, somber, brooding, and menacing expression. I think that that is a really important part, that the fact that his helmsman, this African helmsman, uh, frowns at the two white men that are standing over him. And that the frown just makes the whole scene very somber and brooding and menacing and it's great. So we can talk about in the discussion why the frown is significant. Why is this African helmsman frowning at these two white men? On the next page, uh, Marlowe begins talking about the aftermath and what he would like to do after this attack happens. And it's so interesting. He doesn't want to clean up. He doesn't want to go help the people in his crew. He doesn't want to bury the dead. He wants to take care of his shoes. And um, his, his shoes are all bloody from the helmsman. They've gotten all over the place. He takes his shoes off and socks and throws them overboard. 
And then uh, later on on that same page, he, I mean, he says that they were brand new shoes and he was so worried about everything that he just throws them overboard and casts them off. I think that's very significant. And we can talk about, um, you know, why Marlo throws away his shoes and why is he so worried about changing his socks? And um, on page 42, he says, to tell you the truth, I was morbidly anxious to change my shoes and socks. He's just so worried about his shoes and socks. On page 45 of the Dover Thrift Edition is the next part I want to call to your attention. Um, I've highlighted the quote on the screen. Um, it's a, just a little bit down on the page. Uh, Marlo says, I take it, no fool ever made a bargain for his soul with the devil. The fool is too much of a fool, or the devil too much of a devil. I don't know which. Oh, I think that's such an awesome quote. And um, we can talk about what, why it's so pertinent and so important, and you know, why is selling your soul to the devil such a, an important image in this book. Um, that'll be really good fodder for our discussion down below. Also on page 45, um, Marlowe starts talking about, uh, he just mentions it, mentions it in passing. He talks about the shade of Mr. Kurtz, and then he talks about the original Kurtz. And I think that that's important to note. We haven't even met Kurtz, and he's doing a little... Um, he's giving us some of the plot before it actually happens. He's giving us some propolipus. Um, and so it's, I think it's pertinent and important that there's a distinction, right? There is the original Mr. Kurtz, and then there's the shade of Mr. Kurtz. There's the new Mr. Kurtz. So we can talk about change and going into the jungle and what it does to a person and is Marlowe changing um, what what made it so that Kurtz changed and I think it's going to be a very good discussion very symbolic um, and, and it really ties into the theme of this novella so last I would like to talk about the Harlequin um, Marlowe comes to this um, meets this man right he's Russian uh, a Harlequin is like a buffoon he sees this house with um, sticks that look like and there's like knobs on top of the sticks um, and then he he finds this harlequin and I think it's interesting that they call him a harlequin um, because a harlequin's almost you know as a clown it's a fool and that I think that's interesting because of that quote up earlier about the devil and the fool right um, and I don't know if the harlequin's a literal harlequin or if it's you know he's they're calling him a harlequin but things that the Harlequins say about Kurtz are very important. So I want you to pay attention. I mean, he worships Kurtz. And um, so one of the things he says is on page 49, he says, um, you, Marlo asks, don't you talk with Mr. Kurtz? I said, and the Harlequin answers, you don't talk with that man. You listen to him. I think that is, is really, uh, so then the very last thing I want to call to your attention is on the very last page, of section two, uh, it's on page 50 in the Dover Thrift Edition. It's the last statement of the Harlequin about uh, Kurtz. And he says, I tell you, he cried, this man has enlarged my mind. So, you know, he says, you don't, you don't talk to Kurtz, you listen to Kurtz, that Kurtz has enlarged his mind. He's made him a smarter, better, I don't know, person. And uh, I think that that's really pertinent. Uh, when we finally meet Kurtz, I think it'll be interesting to talk about as well. So those are the things that I thought were important in Section 2 of Heart of Darkness. Uh, go forth and discuss them in the uh, d threaded discussion below. Good job, and I look forward to conversing with you there. Bye, apes.